Good morning. Happy Sunday. So I want to talk to you all. Um, yesterday, the Lord gave me a word for the people at my church. And, um, of course, I'm part of that congregation, right? So as I was reading it, it was almost like a reminder. Angela, you've let yourself get into this place of discouragement. You've let yourself get into this place of doubt. You've forgotten um, the authority that you've been given to trample on serpents and scorpions. That's what the Bible says, that we've been given authority as the children of God to trample on serpents and scorpions. And then it goes on to say over all the power of the enemy. So why are we walking around defeated? Why are we growing weary in our well-doing when his power is made perfect in our weakness? Why? Why are we getting worn out and tired when the joy of the Lord is in is our strength and in his presence is fullness of joy so we know that all we have to do is run to the feet of Jesus we know that if we cast our cares on him all our frustrations all our disappointments all our heartache all our fears all our concerns if we just lay them down at the feet of Jesus he will gladly take the weight but there's there's something that's keeping us from getting into that secret place there's something that's keeping us and maybe it's distraction I don't know what it is that's keeping you from getting into the presence of God, but I'm telling you that that's where we need to be. And we need to be in, in a position where we know who we are in the body of Christ. If we're walking in timidity and fear, God said that he didn't give us that spirit. He said he didn't give us a spirit of fear and timidity. He said he didn't give us a spirit of insecurity. Okay, all of that stuff comes from Satan. But Satan, I rebuke you right now because God gave us a, a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Hallelujah. And I prophesy and decree and declare that sound mind over the body of Christ right now in Jesus' name. And, and he told us that he would give us the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. But why are we not praising him? Why are we not lifting up our shout? Why are we not rejoicing? Or do we not realize that our worship, our praise is a weapon and that's what we were created for. We were created to praise God. We were created to worship him. And there is power in our praise. There is power in worship and his power rests mightily upon us, right? Because the Bible tells us that the spirit of the Lord, the Lord inhabits our praises. That means he dwells within them. When you start praising God, he will get in it with you. Understand me. He will get in it with you. His power will rest mightily upon you. Whatever it is that you need, whatever it is that you're lacking will be provided for you. But we've gotten into this place. We've gotten into this place of defeat and doubt and discouragement. And we've just let failure set in. Why? Because the enemy doesn't want you to walk into your promised land. He doesn't want to make it easy for you. As a matter of fact, he's going to send all kinds of detours. He's going to throw all kinds of obstructions in your path but he cannot stop what God has for you he cannot stop the move of God he cannot stop his plans to prosper and not to harm you and this is what we need to realize we need to understand Satan, you can't do nothing to me apart from my father allowing you to you can't do anything to me Satan I rebuke you get under my feet I've been given that authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. I trample on your plans right now in Jesus' name. I uproot, overthrow, demolish, and destroy every plan the enemy had for me, every plan the enemy had for my children. I nullify it. I cancel it. I render it powerless in the name of Jesus right now. This is how we need to be. Not weak, not weary, not downtrodden. Why are we walking around? We have the victory. We have the victory in Jesus' name. The battle has already been won. But some of us, we don't know, we don't know how to be still. We don't know how to be still and just trust God, right? Because we want to see tangible proof that everything is going to go according to plan. But that's not how it works. Everything does not go according to plan. Okay, your adversary, the devil, he prowls around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's looking for your vulnerabilities. He's looking for your weakness. He wants to intimidate you. Don't let him. Don't let him. 
He's like a small dog with a large bark. Yes, I said it. He's like a small dog with a large bark. You need to understand that the keys to death, hell, and the grave were conquered by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And you are his child. You are his child. And your father in heaven, the Lord of heaven's armies, he is your defender. He fights your battles for you. And your weapons are not carnal, but mighty for the pulling down of strongholds. And a lot of us have strongholds in our life. And one of them, a big one of them, is fear. Fear of the unknown. Fear of public speaking. Fear of driving. Fear of attachment. Whatever it is that you're battling. Fear of getting close to someone. Fear of opening up your heart again. Fear of stepping out in faith when you can't see two feet in front of you. But God did not give you that spirit and fear is a spirit and you can bind that spirit and you can cast that spirit out today. You can cast that spirit out today by the power of the Holy Ghost, not by any might or power of your own, but by the power that comes from the throne room of heaven itself. So why are we walking around defeated? Why are we walking around with our heads down? Why are we growing weary in our well-doing? Yes, we have limited strength. Yes, we get tired. We get weary. But we serve a God who doesn't need sleep. And he doesn't get tired. And he doesn't get weary. And he lends you his strength. It's accessible to you at any time. So why are we not taking full advantage of that? Why? Why are we not telling the devil that your plan for me will not succeed? Because God's plan, I prophesy right now that God's plan to prosper and not to harm me will come to pass. And that everything he has for me, I will walk into in Jesus' name. And no demon or devil in hell will stop it. The gates of hell will not prevail against my ministry, against my purpose, against my calling, against my family, against my image of self if you're if you're battling in your mind maybe you have some insecurities we all do just start decreeing and declaring over your life insecurity has no place here insecurity has no place here and start to lose the opposite of insecurity or if you're weary if you're weary say i will run I will run and not grow weary. I will walk and not faint. I will mount up like with wings like eagles. This is what we need to be doing. We need to be, life and death is in the power of our tongue. We need to be speaking life over our situation. Not getting frustrated because things aren't going according to plan. Things are not always going to go according to plan. But you don't want your plan anyway. You want God's. And if he took you on a detour, if he took you on a detour, if he's taking you down a road that you didn't really anticipate or expect, there's something for you on that road. There, there's something for you on that road. There's something you need to learn on that road. There's, there's a pruning process that needs to happen on that road there's a circumcision of your heart that needs to continue on that road maybe there's a divine appointment for deliverance on that road but we get impatient we get impatient and we make hasty decisions when we get impatient but we need to just be still and know that God is God and he cannot fail but we need, to, we need to get serious about not just letting the enemy come in and turn everything upside down and put things in our path that, that try to intimidate us. And then we forget who we are. We forget who we are. We forget whose hand is on our life. We forget who's backing us up. Who holds us up. Who's backing us up. Whose hand is on our life who fights our battles for us, 
we forget that our weapons are not carnal and they're mighty for the pulling down of strongholds. That stronghold could be addiction. That stronghold could be fear. That stronghold could be rebellion. You might even have a stronghold of, of a laziness in your life. That stronghold could be shame. Whatever it is, it has to come down in Jesus' name. It doesn't have a choice. But how many of us are, are starting to demand and command things in Jesus' name, knowing there is power in that name? There is power in that name. And when you start to have a thought, you start to have a thought, you, you got to, you know, pay attention to every single thought that comes in your mind, right? Filter them out. And as they're coming in, discern, where's this thought coming from? Does that sound like my father in heaven? If it's not the Lord Jesus Christ, if it's not the Lord, I don't want any part of it. So what do we do? We take the thought captive. Uh-uh, Satan. I know what you sound like. I reject this thought. I rebuke this thought. I cast it back to the fiery pits of hell where it came from. I take it captive. I bring it under, under subjection in the obedience of Jesus Christ. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over my mind. I have the mind of Christ. Let the meditations of my, the meditations and the thoughts of my heart be pleasing in the sight of the Lord right now. You resist the devil and he flees. But he doesn't flee if you just make him comfortable. If you just pull up a chair, if you let him into your house, if you make him comfortable and, and accommodate him. No, we, we don't need to compromise with the devil in any degree. I know where that thought came from and it's not going to linger. I'm not going to let it just sit here. I, I don't have time for thoughts of defeat. I don't have time for thoughts of failure. I don't have time for thoughts of I'm tired. Okay, I might be tired, but my father's not and he doesn't need sleep. So let me get in his presence real quick. I call it Holy Ghost Adrenaline. Get in his presence real quick. In his presence is fullness of joy. In his presence is where you'll find your strength. In his presence is where you'll find your peace. In his presence is where you'll find encouragement. In his presence is where you'll find comfort. You're not going to find any of those things if you go anywhere else. You might find temporary comfort in worldly things, but it will not sustain you for the long term. So my question to you is today, do a quick heart check. Have I become weary in my well-doing? Have I forgotten the authority that I walk in? Have I let fear take over in my life? Am I starting to shrink back instead of preaching the gospel to anyone and everyone? Am I letting discouragement make a home here? If the answer is yes, I would encourage you on your own personal prayer time to say, Lord, Remind me, remind me of the authority that I've been given. Help me to, to walk in it. Show me how to operate in the giftings that you've given me. Remove everything in me that would cause me to shrink back. Remove everything in me that would cause me to be fearful of anyone or anything. The only thing that we need to fear is God who can cast body and soul into hell. Other than that, we need to fear no man. We need to fear no man. Because apart from your Father in heaven allowing it to, no weapon formed or forged against you can or will prosper in Jesus' name. No weapon formed or forged against you can or will prosper in Jesus' name. What is the only exception to that? If you don't take up your shield of faith. And what's the opposite of faith? Doubt. Unbelief. Discouragement. 
fear. That's the opposite of faith. So you need to take up that shield of faith to quench every fiery dart that's being thrown at you. And the weapons will form that we are promised. They're coming. So don't get too comfortable. I made that mistake a couple of times. Don't get too comfortable and think, oh, you know, I've been given this reprieve. How nice. And forget that you're in a war. You're in a war. As a child of God, as a matter of fact, when you became a child of God, you entered into this war. And Satan, he knows that you're walking in power. He knows that you're walking in authority. He knows the anointing on your life. He might even know how many people you're going to go on to reach. And he's prideful enough to think that he can stop it. But he can't stop what God has for you. He can't stop what God has for me. And if he gave you a promise, stand on that. Believe for that thing. I don't care what it is. I don't care how impossible it looks. I don't care how many seeds of doubt and discouragement Satan is trying to plant in your mind or in your ear to tell you otherwise. Just keep reminding yourself, I know what God said. I know what God said, and he's not a man that he should lie. I know what my father said, and all his promises are yes and amen. All his promises prove true. I know what God said. I know what God said, and I choose to trust him. I choose to rely and depend on him. Because without faith, it's impossible to please him. So I choose faith over fear. I choose faith over doubt. I choose faith over unbelief. I choose faith over discouragement. We're not weak. We're not weak because where he is weak, we are strong. It's not by any might or power of our own, but by the power of the Holy Ghost. It says, apart from me, you can't do anything, but with me. With me, all things are possible. And we need to start truly believing that. We need to understand the Lord God of heaven's armies, Emmanuel, God with us, the lion of the tribe of Judah, Yahweh, the one who literally just breathed out a command and things came into existence. He brings something out of nothing. That that God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, that God, the God who led Moses, Aaron, and Israelites through the Red Sea on a path of dry land and then took that same sea, that wall, and closed it in on the, those pursuing them, their enemies, and took out Pharaoh's entire army in seconds. That God, that's the one who holds you in the palm of his hand. That's the one whose hand is on your life. That's the one who says, vengeance is mine, I will repay. That's the one who says, be still and know who I am. That's the one who's telling you, fear not and be not discouraged. Because fear didn't come from him. That's the one who tells us, bring all your burdens to me. I can handle them. He can take the weight. And it wasn't meant for you to carry all that anyway. See, part of the indication that we're getting weary, when we start to get weary, when we start to get tired, what that is indicating is that you are trying to fight a supernatural battle in your own strength and you can't do it you can't do it you are not going to win this war on sheer willpower 
tenacity, drive, ambition. I, I don't care how, how ambitious and tenacious you think you are. We all get tired at some point. We all get discouraged at some point. Fear starts to creep in to our hearts, minds, and lives at some point. But when it does, put your armor on. Put your armor on. The armor is in Ephesians. If you don't know what the armor is, all you have to say is, I put on the helmet of salvation. Why? I'm secure in my salvation. I'm saved by grace through faith. It's no works of my own, lest any man could boast. What's the next piece of the armor? The breastplate of righteousness. I put on the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate of righteousness is going to guard my heart, which I'm told to do with all diligence. So I put on the breastplate of righteousness to protect my heart and guard it from any evil getting in. And what is that righteousness? The righteousness that was imputed to me. It's not my righteousness. It's the righteousness of Christ that was imputed to me. And I put on the belt of truth. The Lord is the way, the truth, and the life. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. So what does the belt of truth do? It helps us to discern lies and deceptions. And then you take up the shield of faith. Because without faith, again, it is impossible to please God. So everything that's the opposite, it has to go in Jesus' name. Get under my feet in Jesus' name and stay there. Fear will not be my portion. Discouragement will not be my portion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Defeat and failure will not be my portion. I prophesy success over every area where the enemy thought that he had me. As a matter of fact, I, I, I rebuke you, Satan. Get under my feet in Jesus' name. Every plan, every plot, Every tactic, every scheme that you had planned for me, that you had planned for my ministry, that you had planned for my calling, that you have planned against my, my health, my, my finances, my family, whatever it is, be overthrown, be uprooted, be reduced to nothing in Jesus' name. Be destroyed, be annihilated in Jesus' name. As a matter of fact, I prophesy right now that all the plans that the devil had for me and anyone connected to me, anyone that I love, including any future spouse, I prophesy right now that his plans will completely fail. I prophesy defeat and failure over everything the devil is trying to do in my life and the lives of everyone connected to me. In Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus Christ. That's the authority that we've been given. We need to start walking in faith. And faith is what? It's the evidence of things not seen. It's the substance of things hoped for. Faith means I don't see it in front of me. Maybe it even looks like the most unlikely scenario. But if God said he's going to do it, who am I to question him? As the clay, when he is the potter, who am I to question his methods, his delivery, the way he wants things done, his order, or any, any of the obstructions in my path because every single obstruction in my path has a purpose every single delay in my path has a purpose every single d disappointment in my path has a purpose so let it mold you let it change you let it shape you because he's molding and shaping and changing your character this is the heart circumcision that we hear about in the Bible where he says, I will, give you, I, will, I will give you a new heart filled with right thoughts and right desires. And what are those right thoughts and right desires at the end of the day? God's will and not your own, not our selfish ambitions. But God's will for your life will become the desires of your own heart. That should be our prayer every day. Lord, make your desires my own. Make your desires my own. 
put your will for my life at the forefront of my mind. May I seek to please you and not man. So I, I really hope that if you have forgotten who you are as a child of God, if you have forgotten the power and the authority that you walk in on a daily basis, that you would start reminding yourself of that every morning. Do not leave the house without putting your armor on because that is going to equip you for whatever you're going to face that day. The Bible says, give us today our daily bread. Jesus is the bread of life. What you need from him today is going to be different from what you need from him tomorrow, next week, next month, and next year. So daily, put that armor on. Because would you ever want to run out onto the front lines of a battlefield without something to deflect the things coming at you without a shield, without your armor, without your sword, which is what? The word of God. Jesus is the living word. Jesus is the word made flesh. The word of God is alive and active and sharper than a double-edged sword. That is your sword. In your armor, the sword is the only thing that you can use to launch an attack of your own. The Word of God. So start, get familiar with the Word. Don't just study to show yourself approved and then forget what you learned. Keep it fresh in your mind. Meditate on it. That's what the Bible says to do. Meditate on the Word day and night. Why do we meditate on it? Because when you meditate on something, you're not just reading it. How many of you know if you've ever been in um, college, taking college classes, right? That if you read a lot of material and you try to do it, you know, in, in one sitting, you try to read too much in one sitting when you're really supposed to break it up in smaller increments, right? You're supposed to break it up in smaller increments because you're more likely to retain that. So what you do is you read a little bit, you meditate on what you read, you contemplate it, its meaning. You might even get in the presence of God and ask for discernment. Ask him, loose, before, before you even get in your word, ask him to loose knowledge, wisdom, understanding, revelation. And then start to contemplate, what does this mean? What is this passage really talking about? And how can I apply it in my life? How does it apply to my daily life? This is what we need to be doing. Not just being a hearer of the word, but a doer of the word. And what does it mean to be a hearer, not a, a hearer and a doer? It means I hear the word, I contemplate its meaning, I meditate on it, but then I also go out and I put it into action. I apply it. I put it into practice throughout my life. So if I go into the Bible and it says, you know, gossip is no good, right? And it tells you that it goes into the innermost parts of the belly, right? And that um, somebody who, who bears secrets separates friends, right? So if I know that and I know that the Lord doesn't like it when we sit there and we talk about other people, then when I'm, you know, at work and there's a conversation going on in the lunchroom where they start talking about that coworker who's not around and they're talking about their, their personal life and stuff, I don't need to know. I need to remove myself from that conversation graciously, but I need to leave the room. Right? So we're, we're supposed to resist the devil wherever he's at and he will flee. But it's when you entertain it, it's a problem. So if I know that lying is an abomination, that the Lord hates lying lips, then I need to understand that lying is, is not just an outright lie. Lying can be an omission of certain details of the truth that I left out conveniently because um, I want to I look better. 
I want, I want to be seen in a better light while I'm telling the story. That's still a lie. That's still a lie. Or let's say, you know, you're trying to get a job or whatever, and, and you have an arrest record in your past, but you don't put that on the application. That's being dishonest. It's still a lie. So we need to put that in, into practice. Now, yes, I know that it might be easier for you to get that job, and you might even get that job if you lied on the application. But would God honor it? Would God bless it? No, he would not. No, he would not. And it might not even be the, the place that he had for you, right? Because how many of us know that God plants us in places? So it's not, it's not good enough for us just to make the choice. Well, I want to work here and I like this place because they have uh, great benefits and this is uh, more pay than I've ever been receiving. That's all fine and good, but is that where God wants you? See, I'm in a situation right now where I'm in a hotel and, and I'm leaving in a week and I don't even know where I'm going. And if somebody was to open up their, their home to me and say, Angela, you're more than welcome to come stay with me, my next question would be, Lord, is this your will? Because at the end of the day, yes, okay, I want a roof over my head. Yes, I want that security. And normally, um, five years ago, I would have just jumped at whatever opportunity came my way out of fear. But now... I have that discernment to say I don't I don't want to be outside of God's will. I don't want to get off the course and the path that he has for me. So as great as that would be to come live with you or whatever even if they were offering it rent free, it wouldn't even matter if it's not God's will, I don't want it. If it's not God's will for me, I don't want it. And I don't know if um, if that's the heart posture that you have right now, but I, I just pray that if it's not, that you would start to make that the cry of your heart when, when you get in your own personal prayer time. Lord, not my will, but your will be done because your will is always going to be better. Your understanding is unsearchable. Your ways are not my ways. Your ways are so much higher than my ways. I can't even begin to understand what you want to do in my life. But I trust you. Trust is the opposite of fear. I trust you. I believe you, God. I know the plans you have for me to prosper and not to harm me. And I trust you. I know that you have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging for bread, and I trust you. I know that I am your child, and, 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 and the earth and the fullness thereof belong to you. All the silver and the gold is, is yours to give, and you own the cattle on a thousand hills, so I trust you. Even if I, I don't have it, my father does, and it pleases my father to give good gifts to his children. Hallelujah. So we need to start walking more in faith and not fear. I have a t-shirt that says that, but I, I don't always apply that in my life. If, I, if I'm being honest, there, there's moments where I forget. Who's got me? Who has preserved me and kept me for a time such as this? And if he hasn't dropped me from the womb to now, I, I, I don't anticipate that he's going to anytime soon. If I haven't fallen on my flat on my face from the womb to now, he has carried me out of situations even when I didn't know him. Even when, when I wasn't looking for him. Even when he wasn't the cry of my heart. He was still looking after me. He was still protecting me. He was still preserving me. There was still some, some sort of covering on my life. And how many of you know his, his mercy is new every day? So wake up in the morning expecting God's mercy. Because it's abundant. And great is his faithfulness. He is faithful when we are not. He is consistent when we are not. And he's going to get you through. 
He's going to get you through because he does not fail. So just start decreeing, declaring failure and defeat is not going to be your portion. And everything that the devil had planned for you is being uprooted. It's being overthrown. It's being terminated. It's being canceled. It's being nullified right now in Jesus name. And that the only plan that's going to prosper in your life is the plan God has for you.